already. These chapters really aren't that long. There was a lot of uh, uh, kind of religious ideology at the time, and um, you know. This is not the Iran you left a year ago. Oh, here we go. The people are angry, especially after Savak burned down the cinema Rex. How do you know it's Savak, man? Come on, Bubba. Everybody knows it's them. This is what they do. But now people want answers. You think it can get out of control? Look, it could get ugly, but we won't achieve anything through violence. It might be the only option. Look, ah, Kiwi job. mind. Hello. You have to believe in the power of people. This okay? is my first playthrough. Good yeah. Will triumph. Now come on. It's time to discover you played what this, the Kiwi mind? all about. Okay, so we got a little bit of control here. Oh, who's this dude? Nice outfit, dude. Jeez. That's an interesting look. I've seen this guy before. He calls himself the Walking Dead. He's a walking memorial. Pesaram, my son. Please take a picture. Show the world what is happening here. Okay, Use the camera button. Just All right, okay. Look at this street as a sandwich. <laughs> Are you okay, Bobby? Yeah, I'm. I don't great. like this camera oh, mechanic. Yeah. It's the perfect analogy with the perfect ingredients. The bread, the cheese, the sea the sabzi, and the tea. There's some protesters wore graphic photographs of murdered revolutionaries and became walking billboards. Whether the victims were killed on the street, tortured, or executed, their stories were immortalized in the revolutionary landscape. Oh, that's the whole story. Okay. Fair enough. So the reason I, I took this on, uh, basically, this was in the Steam sale uh, late yesterday. I'm not sure if it's still the same discount, but it was it was five pounds, and that's the kind of money I'm willing to drop on a game on the off chance. Um, I love games that explore areas of gaming that we don't normally hear from. Like, when was the last time you got to explore Iran in a video game outside of shooting everyone who's Iranian in Call of Duty? You know, this is. This period of history is fascinating to me. I'm walking like I'm drunk, but you know. Uh, approach and click on hotspot icons. Well, is there a hotspot? Think about it, Reza. The laborers, the bazaaris, they're the bread, the noob. You can't make a lochme without barbari, and you definitely can't have a functioning society without workers. Okay, I'm listening. And the bazaar is the people's market in Iranian cities. The Bazaris, shopkeepers and merchants, were instrumental in the resistance movement against the Shah. So like we heard from before, they, 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 uh, a lot of these people went on strike. Um, but I think, I think it was more, they were getting at, you know, oil workers, which was the key industry. Iran's export of oil, especially to the West, was huge and it was driving, um, it, you know, transportation and industry in places like America. Uh, Jona Bazaar or Friday Bazaar was and continues to be a weekly event whereby merchants gather to sell goods. The Bazaar is the lifeblood of Iran cities, especially the capital Tehran. It is a social and intellectual hub buzzing with activity and teeming with richness of an ancient culture. Items for sale range from barrels of saffron or dried mulberries to hand-woven silk rugs that cost as much as a family's fortune. The Bazaar's role was central in amplifying the message of the revolution. The entire nation felt the backlash of closed storefronts when thousands of Bazaris went on strike against the Pahlavi regime. So um, the Pahlavi was the you know the, the ruling family, the Shah's family in Iran at the time. Um, and I've actually I've actually experienced these bazaars for myself. Like I've been to um, to Istanbul, and it's not Iran, fair enough. But uh, it, it's an unusual atmosphere because uh, we're used to you know walking down the street unhindered and then going into a store and then choosing what you want to buy and it's so different uh those kind of bazaars everyone's in your face you know you, you the 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 store basically extends out into the street and uh, all the goods are just immediately in your face and so are the people selling them there they're um especially because i was a tourist you know they, they wanted my, my custom um and prices aren't fixed these places you know um i mean you you tend to pr pay a, a maybe a marked standard price for you know, if you just buy an orange or something, maybe. But uh, if you want to buy something like like the like the hand woven silk rug, basically, they'd invite you in. Um, you'd have you'd have the tea. You'd have a cup of tea, um, uh, just because it's polite to do so. And then you'd talk business. You'd haggle until you got the price you want.
Uh, is this the same spot as before? No, it's the same. Yeah, how do I get out? Oh, okay, right, yeah. Don't need another photo of that guy. I wonder if I've got a limited amount of film. It's 1978, after all. Uh, so there's no hot spots here. Oh, get out of my way. Nice car, dude. You don't see too many paycons in Germany. Paycon. The Iranian chariot. The unofficial national car of Iran. After the revolution, the new Islamic government simplified the design and only produced a car in white. Wow. Uh, Iran's top car manufacturer, Iran Kodro, introduced the Paycan in the late 1960s. The westernizing Shah endorsed the car as a symbol of Iran's economic progress and national pride. After the revolution, the Islamic government made a statement against the pressures of westernization by only producing the car in white and removing the chrome accents and decorative panelling of the interior. So, uh, what you have to realize is that uh, Islam is based on uh, never picturing things. You know, never. So, so the belief is that you, you shouldn't draw, I mean, it's a famous example, like, you should never draw Muhammad, right? because uh, that would be idolizing him. So if you ever go into like a mosque or anything like that, there's, there's uh, s s uh, geometric art, uh, which is quite nice by itself, but there's no pictures, you know? And I guess uh, decadence is a key feature of this, this religion as well. You shouldn't be decadent, right? Which means, you know, you shouldn't have loads of bling and eat grapes all the time, you know? Like not literally grapes, but you know, you shouldn't be fat uh, and greedy. That's a... Uh, key part of this religion and uh, I guess chrome accents and decorative panelling held this kind of decadent image and that's why uh, once the Islamic Republic came into effect once the monarchy was thrown out this step was taken but you know people still needed cars so I guess they, they didn't want to shut down car production completely because where, where else would they get cars from um, uh, they would have to import them from somewhere like Russia uh, obviously, they're not too much of a fan of the communist ideology, so a bit of a tricky one. Evening to Bertner as well, who's just arrived. How much free movement do you have in this, or is it more of a point and click? This is very much uh, like a Walking Dead um, sort of telltale, telltale point and click sort of game. Okay, we've actually heard most of this. So, there's no free camera. I can't move the camera. I can't go that way, apparently. It's not a high production value game at all. That's what makes a sandwich a sandwich. And the cars we drive, the clothes we wear, the things we follow, that's what makes Iran, Iran. Mint, basil, tarragon. The students, writers, the revolutionaries, giving us the extra kick we need to set change in motion. So the revolutionaries, unlike a lot of, um, kind of, I, I guess, unlike a lot of nations, the, the revolutionaries are actually looking to make, you can't trust it, the to make Iran more, uh, more Islamic. So the boiling tensions, many supporters of Ayatollah Khomeini fostered a strong anti-American sentiment directed towards the US government. Now, some of this, let's click on learn more here. Some of this was very much the, the Ayatollah's doing, no doubt, you know. Politics relies upon creating a false fear or an exaggerated fear so that the people who want power promise to get rid of that fear, whether it exists or not. Right, we had that with communism. America was, went to war with communism. We got it with terror now. Right, the government is insistent that everyone is trying to cause terror, and they're the only ones who could stop it. Right, so this was what happened in Iran, um, and of course, none of this came from the Shah because he was good mates with America, because America was shipping him arms and they were exporting oil to America. 
So the Ayatollah comes along and says, look, the westernization that's happening, that's all America's fault. They're trying to corrupt you with capitalism. Many supporters of Ayatollah Khomeini, yeah, okay. Uh, they held the U.S. government responsible for meddling in Iranian affairs dating back to 1953 coup when the U.S. positioned itself favorably to benefit from Iran's natural resources, namely oil. At the time of the revolution, Khomeini supporters were intolerant of the United States' cultural influences and its endorsement of the Shah's reform policies. Okay. My father and my brother are rotting you go, in jail. Brother. How many more must unjustly be imprisoned so that the Shah can live in his lavish palace and deny us our You're basic welcome, freedom? Brother. Here, brother, read the truth of what is really happening. Anything else you read is corrupt and filled with lies. We must come together as one for real. Mercy, Khaher. Thank you, sister. Stay true, brother. I mean, this is a shame. Like, no I would have. To to the Shah's lies. What's this? Speech two. I mean, uh, stories. I I would have, I would have actually liked to have um, the audio in Farsi, and the subtitles in English. Yeah, so that's what I did with Metro. I played the game through in Russian and had English subtitles because it would have had. It sounds strange walking through the streets of Tehran and hearing everyone speak with American accents. Yeah, that's just me. Especially when it's kind of so anti-American. But the general feeling at the time was that the. Um, the Shah, and it, some of it was true. The Shah was basically amassing the oil fortune paid for by exporting oil to other countries, while the people didn't really benefit from it. The people sort of argued they should be benefiting from it as well, uh, but the Shah was. The, the feeling was the Shah was, you know, holding lavish. He uh, lived in lavish surroundings, had all, all the things he wanted, and the people didn't. The foundation of our Islamic government is based on freedom of dialogue and will fight against any kind of censorship. In the Islamic Republic, the rights of the religious minorities are respectfully regarded. Our future society will be a free society, and all the elements of oppression, cruelty, and force will be destroyed. We would like to run the Islamic government like Islam at its beginning, so that people know how different the Islamic democracy is from other democracies. If the people of the world know the benefits of Islam, my hope is that they all become Muslims. So these are excerpts, actual excerpts from, uh, from the words Ayatollah Khomeini used in various interviews. And the notable theme is how great everything's going to be if there, if there is an Islamic Republic, you know. He's talking about Islamic democracy there. Uh, the monarchy had um, no uh, elections, um, and it was just that was the way it is. And there's a feeling that Khomeini could change that, you know. Here you go, sister. What's this? Are we taking a picture of that already? That's uh, the Zoroastrian symbol, In school, they tell us it means royal power. But my mom always told me it stands for inner strength. So th this scene, this chapter is very much about exploring the background surrounding. I mean, don't expect it to be action-packed just yet. Uh, one of the oldest religions in the world, Zoroastrianism, originated in ancient Iran over three and a half thousand years ago. Various principles within Judaism, Christianity and Islam can be traced to Zoroastrian teachings. Hmm. Zoroastrianism is a highly spiritual faith rooted in elements of water, earth, air, and fire. The foundation of Zoroastrianism involves a devotion to the highest form of self, a person who abides by good thoughts, good words, and good deeds. Zoroaster taught that each person has the freedom to choose good or evil in the decisions they make. The prophet spoke of an eternal afterlife and that the choices made by each person determine his or her destiny in such an afterlife. These teachings were later adopted, uh, later adapted into various principles of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Persepolis, the palace of Dariush the Great. Oh, I've never seen it written like that. It's normally Darius. And Darius the Great was constructed around 515 BC. It served not only as the capital of the first Persian Empire, but also as a place to celebrate Nowruz, the Persian New Year. Interesting. So, of course, Persia was the area that then became Iran later Ignore the state -sponsored newspaper, because the people felt that releasing a game called Prince of Iran uh, wouldn't have been as popular. What's 
Is that the Ayatollah here? Anyways, the bitter Siadune, the black seeds on top, are all the people left in the shadows by the Shah. The drug addicts, the beggars, the poor. The rich get richer, and the poor get poorer. There's no chance for people like her in Iran today. Let the smoke of this Esfand protect you, my son. Inshallah. Merci, Khanum. I hope you and your child find what you need. Esfand, oh Esfand. She's so poor, she can't even afford to be made of any more polygons. What are we taking a picture of here? Oh, you. Okay. While some enjoyed a time of great prosperity during the Shah's rule, poverty and inequality became a rapidly growing problem. Mm. Many of Iran's laborers became destitute due to extremely low wages imposed by foreign investors like Great Britain. I don't see the link there, personally. I don't see how uh, foreign investors can affect wages. Iran's perceived economic progress became overshadowed by by of, that's a bit of a typo, uh, by poverty and income equality, inequality. That wasn't very clear, that bit. A shame. Ah. What's this? People use the walls to post information and writing too. At least before it gets torn down. Hey brother, got something to post to the wall? That's my brother. He died for this revolution. Can I click on anything here? Okay, maybe not. Welcome to Vespers Haven, by the way, who showed up on Twitch. Nice to see ya. Baby, Kurosh Aliye, huh? He's a real rock star. Yeah, yeah, Kurosh is good, but Darius is the man. Uh, okay. Yeah, I have this rock and roll and heavy metal. Yeah, yeah. Take a I have something special for you. Look at all these cassettes. I have lots of Khomeini and even Sharia Nadari. How did you get these? My brother. He has a connection. But you can find them here and all over the city. So, um, don't forget Ayatollah Khomeini is uh, in exile at the moment, in Paris, 1978. Um, he was banned. He was exiled from Iran. And it wasn't acceptable to possess any of his teachings in any form. Writing, cassettes, you know, you could have been arrested for that and probably executed. Uh, English. All the magazines are writing that when their reporters went to investigate the situation inside Iran, they witnessed Iran was a country whose population had started to march peacefully, numbering in many millions of people throughout the entire nation. Men, women and children, old and young, marched non-violently in the streets. They were all demanding that they didn't want this shock. So when the people don't want this public servant, we have to step aside. We don't want this public servant. You see, I'm not the only one with these cassettes. If the people's right to say, this public servant, this honest and decent man who wants to better our country to its highest heaven, we don't want him to be the one to do it. Don't they have that right? Isn't it a human right that every person has the right to determine his own destiny? Well, these people want to determine their own destiny and they don't want this Mr. Public Servant. So the most widespread and successfully undetected form of revolutionary communication was through the circulation of audio tapes that featured speeches by influential clerics. Uh, the tapes were smuggled into Tehran, reproduced and circulated covertly. They featured voices of exiled clerical leaders and outspoken intellectuals who called for unarmed resistance and non-cooperation. The power of speech was so effective in mobilizing the people that it prompted the leaders of the revolution to claim tape cassettes are stronger than fighter planes. So don't forget, up until this point, um, the, the, the activism 
is uh, mainly instigated by this uh, Ayatollah Shariat Madari, who uh, is encouraging uh, millions of people to protest peacefully at this stage. Um, reminds me a lot of, uh, you know, Martin Luther King. He was kind of uh, instrumental in inciting protests, black, black rights protests in America in the 1960s, but completely non-violently at this stage. That's the important bit. And um, this is another nod to the, the kind of westernizing nature of the culture at this time, in that this guy's saying that he's got tapes, you know, heavy metal, and he's got disco and all this kind of stuff. Because um, all of that stuff was endorsed by the king of Iran, the Shah, uh, in, in his sort of westernizing attempts. Let's get to the front before the crowd pushes us back. Well, that was really what he had. I hope we can make it. I'd love to get a shot of Atbox. This is going to be great, Reza. One day we can tell our kids about this. No matter what, Paul, keep your eyes on me and let's not lose each other in the crowd. Interestingly, this chap's name, Reza, the character that you're playing here, is... That's the same name as the Shah. The King. Uh, which is, uh, I don't know if that's deliberate or just, just a coincidence. is a democracy. But how can that be true when we are imprisoned and executed for our beliefs? That's Bibi. She's one of the leaders of the student front. What do you think, Reza? She doesn't hold back, huh? Because she says what we're all thinking. Join me in welcoming Brother Abbas, a personal hero of mine, and a man who has endured persecution and torture for his vision of a free Iran. I am honored to share this stage with you, and we are all humbled by your courage. Thank you, Miss Golestan. Represents the regime whose leader, Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, came to power illegitimately. Come on, Reza, join in. Reza, why are you not cheering? I, I don't know about this guy, Baba. Our Senate and Majlis are therefore illegitimate. That's right, we illegitimate. The Iranian people. We must never, never forget what happened at the Cinema Rex by the hands of the secret police, the Savak. They trapped 425 innocent women, children, and men inside the cinema and burned it, burned it to the ground. It goes them off. Pretty impressive, huh? Love that, these people love them. Rezo, you should be taking pictures of this. This is a momentous occasion. Man, look at all those people on stage. Who are they? All the major players are represented. You got the clergy, the communists, the Tuda party, student leaders from the National Front, even the Mujahideen is represented. All of them are here to support Abbas? It's dangerous for Abbas, but that's what he needs to do. How long do you think a truce will last? I don't know, we'll see. Still hiding behind the camera. Something's never changed. Ali! <laughs> Ali, what are you Benny doing Nane. here? Let me look at you. Wow. Ali? I can't believe Ali, you're here. what are you doing here? Come on, man. in the military or everywhere. All right, get over here. Thanks for bringing this out. About time my cousin opened his eyes to the real world. Ali, where you been? Kujai? I'm sorry it's been so long. I had to disappear for a bit. No one knows I'm back yet, so let's keep it in. Wait, are you no longer with the Mujahideen? What have you heard? Shishenidi. Ali, what's going on? I did what I had to do. You do the same. Ali, you know this is a peaceful movement. Brother Abbas is preaching nonviolence up there. How's that working out, Bobak, huh? Because I am for the side that wants to win. I see some of our friends have decided to join us. Hoshumadi, welcome. Let them arrest us. Let them beat us. Let them jail us. They are our brothers in wolves clothing. This is a peaceful This assembly. is our democratic right. Done We've done illegal. nothing wrong. You cannot arrest Take him. Take your hands off her. This way. Go. Move. This is a disgrace, Reza. We're all supposed to be on the same side. We're all countrymen. They work for the Shah. What do you expect, Bobak? They're working because they need the money, not because they want to be soldiers. 
Reza, you must take a picture of this. People need to see the truth. See? There's always a battle. Hey, Ali, what are you doing? Come on! Come on. Oh, get out of here! The soldiers aren't the enemy, Ali. They're oppressed workers. Don't you get that? They're forced to take orders by our oppressors. We're all the same in the eyes of this abusive government. What? Ali, you should listen to him. Seriously, Baba? Do you hear yourself? Nobody forced them to put on those uniforms. What choice do they have, Ali? They need their jobs. You always have a choice. So support the Shah or let your family starve. Yeah. You call that a what choice? What about my family? My father? Arrested, tortured, murdered, and for what? What choice did he have? If you're gonna cry, Babak, weep for him. When does it stop, Ali? When we make it stop. I fight for the innocence lost in that Evin prison. You worry about your damn soldiers. You win? Don't do this, Reza. Trust me. You throw that rock, and it's gonna change you. You can do this. Make a stand. Just drop it, Reza. Ali, what about what Abbas is saying up there about peace and prayer? Stick to your pictures, Reza. Why live in the real world when you can just take snapshots of it instead? Listen to him, Ali. Dorosmi. You made the right choice, Reza. What are a few rocks going to do other than justify the army to attack us? I'm not getting involved with this. They're taking Apos. He's a journalist. You should stay neutral. Do what Don't you listen want. to him, Reza. It's not the only way. I stick to taking pictures. You disappoint me, Reza. Death to the shore! There's the Molotov that Zewolf's talking about in chat. Look! Look what Ali started! Come on! Let's get out of here! Uh-oh. Quick time event. This is illegal. Not doing very well at this. Oh, my camera. Huh. I don't think that was, uh... Like worth dying for. I thought it was just like I couldn't get the camera. <laughs> I need to get better at these quick time events, obviously. They are the same button presses every time. Oh, nice. They still dropped the camera. How exactly was I killed last time, anyway? Oh god. Okay, so um, there was there was a, a period in Iran where the peaceful process were going ahead that the, uh, the public were encouraged to give flowers to the soldiers, you know, to try and win the soldiers over. Because, as as was pointed out in that Reza, particular scene, Reza, over here. I'll just oh. allow this to you play okay? out. Yeah, I'm okay. Where's Ali? I lost him. Take your pictures now before they tear gas the place. Show the world what's going on in our streets. If you ever get close enough to these rifles, you'll find three letters printed on them. U S A. So, so yeah, that's, that's exactly what they're saying. The, the armaments came from the United States. In the early days of the revolution, tensions between the military and the protesters ran very high. The army was stocked with impressive and sophisticated weaponry acquired from trade with the U.S. How many times have we heard that before? Whoa, I, I didn't think this would get out of hand. What's with the military trucks? The Shah's sharp decline in popularity led him to make a gestured compromise. In hopes of addressing some of the people's issues, he assigned J Jafar Sharif Imami, a politician with ties to the clergy, 
to the popula to the position of Prime Minister of Iran. Sharif Amami made concessions to the people by lifting press censorship and increasing government transparency. He also tried to placate influential mullahs by closing down casinos and replacing anti-religious officials with political moderates. Despite these reforms, the protests continued and fortified in number. Sharif Amami responded by enforcing aggressive means of crowd control involving troops and tanks. So, so, what, so what they were saying in the scene we've just seen is basically the people need jobs. You know, the Iranian military was huge at the time, a major employer, and it was the only way for some people to get money. So they were being told to go out there and, um, and stop all these protests, the military. But um, it didn't automatically mean they aligned themselves with the Shah's form of government or beliefs. It just meant that they needed a paycheck, they had to obey orders, you know? Uh, Kiwi Mind's off. Sorry, I'm going to bail. Thanks for the stream. Uh, good to see you again, Kiwi Mind. Come back soon. Um, and, of course, the military was very well armed. And um, it wasn't outright motivated towards the Shah. But the people were starting out by protesting peacefully, you know. Um, but I, I guess, we'll, as we'll see, uh, it didn't really remain that way. And with with all, with all of the American supplies available in Iran, it quickly descended into chaos. Now, give me about five minutes just here. Going to take a quick break at this stage. And I'm going to come back and carry on with 1979, the revolution. We'll explore some more of uh, Iran's history in about five minutes. <laughs> 